10 2. Sorry for the delay. <laughs> All you Dodger fans, I didn't see them hats before, but whatever. <laughs> I'm Cubs all day, Cubbies all day. <laughs> Good morning, Coach. Good morning. Happy yeah, I, I've maybe celebrated like three times in my life, so <laughs> dressed up as Ob uh, as ODB one time. That's what I did. <laughs> <laughs> ODB slash Obi Wan Wan Kenobi. So I did the Star Wars and Wu Tang together. It was interesting. It was interesting. <laughs> all right, Cincinnati. Obviously, uh. Cincinnati's a good player, Jamar Chase. Some good players. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you know, he he he's one of the best in the league, you know. And I, if you want to argue he is the best, then I, I I can't I can't I don't have a real good strong rebuttal for that, you know, between him, Jefferson, and some of the other guys. And then on top of that, they got they had a whole crew of receivers. They're all fast. They're all big. I think they've done a real good job in their personnel department, how they've shaped the team um, offensively. You know, given the quarterback who is elite, this is my first time going against them, and I'm really impressed with the quarterback in terms of his toughness. You know, before you start talking about just, just straight up the skill level, you're talking about the toughness he displays in the pocket, sits in there, gets the ball down the field, steps in the throws. His intelligence out there, you can see him changing plays, and you can see they're all on the same page, the receivers, the O-line, the backs. So, you know, kudos to those guys in terms of what they've done with the, their personnel department, putting those guys together. And, I mean, you can see there's some smart players out there, not just because they have the Ivy League guy, but, you know, but there's some smart players out there that are really skilled and they present a ton of challenges. So it's going to be a tough one. I know it's probably not exciting to try to prepare for. Oh yes, it's exciting. I'm a competitor. But I guess when you get to see a player for the first time like that, like dive in deep on a, a guy like Joe Burrow, is that is that kind of a fun challenge for you? Yeah, it was fun. I mean, again, we, we, you know, you, the, on Monday you hear us talking in the office. Like some of the guys have gone against them before. I'm sitting there like, geez, this dude's good, man. You know, and like, I'm smiling because of the challenge. I understand it causes a little later nights and some headaches, I guess, but. But I'm excited to go against them. He, he's, a, he's a good player. And then the backs, I'm real impressed with the backs. You know, Brown and Moss, I believe. Yep. They're, I mean, in terms of their ability to get into the hole, get to the second level, I think they got a good combination. Of Again, I think the personnel department has done a good job of putting that, that staff, to, that, that group together. And they're obviously well coached. And yesterday, uh, Coach Pierce talked about Trayvon Merrick and how playing in the box has allowed him to mm -hmm. make plays in the ball. I guess going into that, Transition for him. I know he's been mostly mostly a post safety in the past, and kind of you know level play have you seen from him the last couple of weeks? You know, football's a big man sport, you know, and he's a big man. So like, get him down there near the action, and the other thing is he's doing both. He's doing both. He's in the deep part of the field. He's down. That's that really comes with the position, you know, especially in today's league where you have to operate from some split safety looks, drop it down, stay in there, but. I mean, Trey's just grown as a football player. I think GA's done a really good job. Chris Ash, when we got here uh, two years ago, did a good job of bringing him along. And now GA's there, and, they're, and he's just really growing and maturing. And again, like I've told you guys before, it's a choice they make. You know, a choice they make to say, okay, I'm a professional football player. I really don't have anything else to do except get good at football. And then you got to put that work in. And real proud of what he's done. And, you know, he's always had this skill level. And you're just starting to see him reap the rewards of his hard work. Real proud of that guy. Over the past couple of weeks, Max has obviously been dealing with that ankle injury. However, he still, you know, statistically is ranked amongst one of the top edge rushers in the league. You know, how impressive is it to see him still put in that effort and how much of a, of a standard or a message that's in the rest of the locker room? Well, I don't talk about injuries as an assistant coach, but I'm always impressed with everything Max does. <laughs> if you were around him as much as we are, you would be impressed with everything whether it's a birthday party for his daughter, whether it's how he operates in meetings, his prep, uh, getting ready for a meeting, his prep in the walkthrough, zeroed in, uh, laser focused. Just, I'm always impressed with what he does. And physically, he could do anything out there on that field that he puts his mind to. And the beauty of it is he's always searching for more. He's always searching for 1% to get better. And that's not, as a coach, when you have an elite player like that that's eager to get better and wants the coaching, wants something to work on his uh, craft, that, that, that makes my job easier. Coach, as far as Tyree Wilson goes, he had his first sack this past mm -hmm. week. We don't like to talk about past games, but that, his great. development, you know, and how great was it to see him come through like that? The, the thing, 
when you're dealing with young ru edge rushers or young rushers, D linemen, again, in my opinion, unless you're truly, truly like elite speed, elite speed, it takes some adjusting to our game because they're, they've never been blocked before. So, you know, again, I'm patient. I can't speak for everybody out there in the world for being patient, but like, He's been working hard on getting his hand placement right, getting his eyes in the right place, playing with a good base, shoring up his base because, you know, he had to get a little stronger down there in his lower body. I'm just happy that he's reaping the rewards. And, and to me, the rewards aren't necessarily just getting sacks all the time. I understand because they're on Twitter. They're, people are talking. I get that. I mean, and the sacks are the sexy thing to get. But he's gotten pressure. He's, uh, he's pushed back guards, centers during, during his time here. But... Of course, I love it when they get a sack. I know he would agree with me on this one, though. I love it more if we get a win. So <laughs> that's what that's what we got to start stacking those. How much of a relief was it when uh, Spillane was able to come right back in the game after only missing one play? No different than whether it's the fans, the players out there on the field, Spill himself. Probably, I mean, you want the guy to come back, obviously, but like nobody's going to care about my feelings, so I don't really get caught up in relief or – sadness or happiness I, I'm I'm always happy to have the best players out there and Spill's one of our best players so I was just happy that he was okay that's a, that's the main thing for me but sense of relief I mean, I mean the game was going to keep going on so and Spill wouldn't want me to sit there you know worried about it <laughs> but you uh, mentioned Yoshivas was an Ivy League player oh yep um really counting Princeton as Ivy League I don't think it's just Harvard yeah yeah it's HYP I mean you know it's HYP Harvard Yale Princeton you know but you know there's there's only one that's really really the best. We we all know that. We all know that. <laughs> um, you talk about stacking up wins, and obviously mm -hmm. your defense is doing you know their part on on their end. Um, how much more do you think that they have to do in order to help get this team that win? Our part as a defense is to keep them from having less points than our offense. So that's our part. So that does. <laughs> That's all that matters. That all that matters. That, in terms of on Sundays. Between Sundays is about improving and winning the day. So today, we got a big day today. Thursday, there was great energy in the room today. There's great energy in the walkthrough. I'm excited to see how practice goes today and see how we win, win Thursday today and then get in the meetings later and win those meetings right there. But our job, and it hasn't changed, is always to keep the offense, to keep the, the opposing team's offense from having less points than our than our offense or points of the team. So that's, that's, that's our job. So that job description will never change for us. Not, I'm not trying to be rude or anything, but that's just that's how I operate. You can see, I, I, not tensed up, but like that's, that's, that's our job. I don't care how many points we got to keep them down to. The last two up front, third down offense gets a lot of focus, but how important is it going to be this week to limit Cincinnati's success on those early downs so you can put yourself in positions to really unleash that defense? It's going, to be, it's going to be critical. It's going to be critical. You know, you can see the effects. I mean, not just live in the past, but last week when we didn't get off the field, we made them snap it again, but we didn't get off the field. We eliminated the early down explosives, but we didn't do what we've been doing all, all, all year. So we got to get – we got to, I got to fix that in terms of, you know, I got to do a better job calling it, got to do a better job putting the guys in the right position. But to go 75% on third down last year, last week, what they did, I mean, that's unacceptable. I mean, that's, you know, you get called the principal's office on that one. <laughs> we, can't, we can't do that one. No, no, no. That's not good ball. Uh, before you started speaking, you were talking about uh, your very interesting Halloween costume that you had. Uh, <laughs> Amongst the locker room, just yeah. kind of seeing people come in today and yesterday, mm -hmm. what do you think is the best Halloween costume in the locker room this year? Oh man, I, I again, I'm you gotta know you, you guys getting to know me three years. Like I, I may I maybe remember one of them, but I can't remember now. I'm just I'm worried about Joe Burrow. Come on, man. If one of them came in and dressed as Joe Burrow, that would be frightening. I mean, <laughs> you know what I mean? Like he's here today. Sorry, my language. <laughs> All right, thank you.